Friday and your uh, week or weekly quiz, your lecture quiz is going to be on signal transduction and the part of the chromosomes chapter that we covered on Wednesday. Um, right. And as a matter of fact, what I thought I'd do is start with a recap of some major concepts from Wednesday on the chromosome chapter, uh, just to sort of lead into to the new stuff on it. Uh, let's see, all right, so we're on chromosomes, and remember each chromosome consists of a structure called a centromere, which is kind of a, a handle for the chromosome, think of it like that, and a big piece of double-stranded, double-helix DNA, like this. Um, and there are some proteins that the DNA is wrapped around called histones, but for the sake of clarity, I'm not going to put those uh, in this diagram. And uh, the, the piece of DNA and the histone protein that's wrapped around is called uh, the chromatid. So a, a chromosome is the centromere and the chromatid. A lot of chromos here to get mixed up, mixed up with each other. Now that I think about it, chromatid, chromosomes, yada yada. Um, and these chromosomes, uh, the chromatids, could be quite long um, in terms of the actual number of nucleotides, in terms of the, the G's and A's and T's and C's from the start to the end. Sometimes hundreds of millions of base pairs of nucleotides uh, long. And each chromosome holds hundreds or even thousands of genes. Uh, the, the genes, the, you know, the segments that encode proteins, are just regions of the chromatid. So this might be a gene for a certain protein here, and maybe here's another gene for another protein, another gene for another protein, there, there, and there, and there. All along the chromatid, uh, you'll, find, you'll find hundreds or even thousands of genes. So our our grand total, remember, for human beings is around 25,000 genes. And so those, are, those genes are distributed throughout your uh, 46 chromosomes, which actually now leads me into what I was going to recap here, the chromosome number. Each, uh, right here on the digital slide, you see a cell with some chromosomes inside the nucleus. Each species has a characteristic number of chromosomes that you find inside the, the, the nucleus of its cells, and that's called its chromosome number. For human beings, the chromosome number is 46 chromosomes. And I think I mentioned some other uh, plants and animals and what their chromosome numbers are. This is the only one you have to memorize, but uh, remember gorillas are 48, and dogs are 78, and those pea plants that Gregor Mendel was breeding with each other to, to work out the rules of genetics. Those had 14 chromosomes. Uh, anyway, so that's, that's called the chromosome number. Um, and you can distinguish one chromosome from another in several different ways. Chromosomes have different lengths. Um, and matter of fact, they use the lengths of the chromosomes as a way to number them uh, in any species. Whichever is the longest chromosome, they refer to as chromosome one. The second longest chromosome is chromosome two, then three is a little shorter, then four is a little shorter than that, all the way down until the shortest chromosomes have the, the largest numbers. In, in all species, they use this scheme. Uh, so length is distinguishing characteristic. Centromere location is a distinguishing characteristic. The centromere, despite its name, is not always in the middle, and uh, the exact location of that centromere is characteristic of chromosomes. Like, for instance, in, in human beings, all chromosome number fours have their centromere a little bit slid towards the bottom side, uh, like that, whereas all chromosome 21s have their centromeres more towards the middle, uh, like that. That's a distinguishing characteristic. But probably the most important characteristic is what genes they contain. Uh, just like if you had 25,000 books and 46 shelves on a library, and so you distributed the books throughout the, the various library shelves. Each shelf would have its own 
collection of books. Well, each chromosome has its own particular collection of genes that you can always find on it. And I gave you some examples of this uh, on chromosome number 15, for instance, is in all human beings at that spot, you always find the gene for eye color. Uh, and there's a term locus. The, the locus of a gene means its specific location on one specific chromosome. So that, that spot you see there for the eye color gene is the locus of the eye color gene. And it's always on chromosome 15 in human beings at that exact same spot. And on chromosome 9, you'll find a gene that controls the blood type. And on chromosome 11 is the gene for insulin hormone, which is a protein. And on chromosome 17 is a gene for growth hormone, which is a, a, another uh, protein hormone. Louis, you had a question? Yes, tell me. On number 15, that's where they find the eye color? Well, um, how do you manipulate that to, to dictate what color the child has in their birth? Um, let me let me answer that when we get to the Mendelian genetics chapter, because they, they, they go into quite a bit of length, uh, depth about how that operates. So let me let me answer that then. If that's good. Another one like you know, so you get two different colors from from a parent from your parent. Right? Yes. So you if the kid doesn't ha, has only uh, like four choices of color, right? Yeah, well, in their genes, or, but since we can manipulate them, so does that mean they have an independent amount of choices to pick from? No. Uh, color, well, when we refer to eye color here, at least in these genetics chapters, it's kind of a simplified model of eye color. But when they refer to eye color in, in these chapters, they mean either brown colored eyes or non brown colored eyes. And so, in, in that context, there's only two eye colors. And what if you have non-brown eyes, what controls whether you have blue or green or gray? I'm not exactly sure. I'm, I'm sure it's also related to genes, but it's probably some other gene. Um, but again, let me, let me force all your questions until we get to the chapter on Mendelian genetics. The, 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 the answer, they'll answer it then. Uh, anyhow, so each chromosome holds hundreds or sometimes even thousands of genes, and you always find those same genes at those exact spots on that exact chromosome. Alrighty, let's see now. Um, so human beings have 46 chromosomes, but to be a little bit more accurate in this description, we actually have two sets of 23. So you have actually two chromosome number ones, and two chromosome number twos, and two chromosome number threes, all the way down to, through your entire set, to two chromosome number 23. And I think I gave you the hand analogy last time. Just, you know, you have 10 fingers, but more accurately, you have two thumbs and two pointer fingers and two middle fingers and like that. You have two sets of five fingers. You have two sets of 23 chromosomes. Uh, and these are called homologous pairs of chromosomes. There's your homologous pair of chromosome number ones and homologous pair of chromosome number twos, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And the reason why you have two sets of 23 is because you have two parents. We all started out life as a single cell, a single cell called a zygote, right at the moment of conception or, or fertilization, as it's sometimes called. That's when we began life, and we that that zygote cell divided and divided and divided. And so, when you're a newborn, you actually have trillions of cells at that point, all derived from that zygote that you started off. But since you know, since all the cells in your body came from that one cell that with 46 chromosomes, all the cells in your body have 46 chromosomes. And it doesn't end there. When you continue to grow and become an adult, you know, ultimately all the cells in your body are derived from that zygote that you start off life as, so all the cells in your body have 46 chromosomes. But the one exception are reproductive cells, sperm cells and egg cells. Each sperm and egg cell only has one set of 23 see there and you see there and that's how you got your your homologous pairs if this if these are the chromosome ones right here you got one chromosome one from dad and you got one chromosome one from mom and if these are the chromosome twos right here you got one chromosome number two from mom and one chromosome two from dad and if these are the chromosome threes you got one of those from dad and one of those from mom so you get one set of 23 
from each parent, and that gives you your two sets of 23 or your 46 chromosomes. And um, on, on all these diagrams, whenever they're showing the homologous pairs of chromosomes, they're always going to show a red one, which is your maternal homologous chromosome to that pair, and a blue one, which is your paternal chromosome from that homologous pair. Alrighty. Um, so, uh, you know, if we're talking about a homologous pair, let's see, here we go. They really are the same chromosome, they are the same length, they have the same centromere location, and they have the same genes that have, for, for the same traits, uh, whereas chromosome uh, 15 here. So this is the one that has your eye color gene on it right about there, and so, you know, you find the eye color gene on that locus on your maternal chromosome 15, and the eye color gene at that locus on your paternal chromosome uh, 15. They're got, got the same genes at the same locations. They are homologous pairs of uh, chromosomes. Okay, uh, now, so creatures like human beings, or, or maybe I should phrase this in a slightly different way. Um, anytime you have a situation like this, where you have two of every chromosome, one, one, of those chromosomes inherited from your mom and one from your dad. So if you have two sets of chromosomes, you're, they use the word diploid, or they sometimes write it 2n, where n equals one set of chromosome, meaning you've got two sets of chromosomes. And so you can use this word to refer to a cell that has two sets of chromosomes, or to an entire organism whose cells are, are each have uh, two sets of chromosomes. A cell or organism that has two sets of chromosomes where it got one set uh, from each parent. And this emphasizes the fact that for diploid organisms like ourselves, you have a pair of each chromosome, and therefore that means you have a pair of each gene. You have two genes for eye color, one you inherited from your mom, one you inherited from your dad. You have two genes for blood type, uh, whereas chromosome 9, one that you inherited from mom, one you inherited from dad, you have two genes for insulin hormone, one you got from mom, one you got from dad, you have, you have two of each of your 25,000 genes. There we go, one from mom and one from dad. Okay, now, um, so all your cells are diploid cells with the exception of your reproductive cells, which are only have one set of chromosomes, and there's a term for that type of cell or that type of organism. It's called a haploid, which is sometimes just written N um, to indicate that it's a cell or an organism that only has one of each chromosome, so only one, one set of chromosomes. In, um, in members of the animal kingdom, including, including ourselves, the only haploid cells you find in your entire body are your reproductive cells, uh, and those have to be haploid so that when you make babies, the, uh, the next generation will start off with the right number of chromosomes, the, the 46 number. You know, imagine if our sperm and eggs were not haploid, what, how many chromosomes would the next generation start off with? You know, too many, right? If, if the sperm and the egg each had 46 chromosomes, the diploid number, then what would that be, 92? The next generation would have 92 chromosomes, which is just not the right chromosome number uh, for human beings. Oh, just incidentally, that's why you have traits from both your mom and your, and your dad, because you get chromosomes from both your mom and your dad. Okay, so haploid organisms or haploid cells are ones that only have uh, one of each chromosome. So in other words, they only have uh, one of each gene. Now, um, so as I said, in human beings, that would just be your, your reproductive cells. And in, in most members of the animal kingdom, that just means only the reproductive cells are haploid. But there are some organisms who, whose entire bodies, you might say, are just haploid cells. And these tend to be microscopic primitive organisms. And the best example of that is uh, bacteria. There we go. Remember, bacteria. Actually, now that I think about it, all prokaryotes, bacteria and archaea, uh, are haploid organisms. They only have one chromosome. Who remembers what's odd about the chromosome of prokaryotes? There's something strange about its structure. It's 
circular, yeah. It doesn't, they're not really, they don't really show it well here, but if you unravel this thing, it's like shaped like a hula hoop. Uh, but anyway, the point I'm making now is that prokaryotes only have one chromosome, so they only have one of each gene, and therefore they are haploid organisms. And um, there are actually some eukaryotic organisms which are haploid also. This shows some bread mold, and uh, which is a eukaryote. Uh, molds are, are relatives of the fungus, which, which are eukaryotes. But if you were to look at uh, the cells of this mold under a microscope, uh, you would see that they are haploid. I'm not sure how many chromosomes they have, but they only have one set of chromosomes, whatever their chromosome uh, number is. Um, but as a general rule of thumb, haploid organisms are usually very primitive, very small, typically single cellular organisms. Pretty much anything, any organism that, that's big enough for you to see with your naked eye is going to be a diploid organism. So certainly human beings, dogs, cats, goldfish, uh, most insects, and even the plants that are big enough for you to see, trees and flowering plants and weeds and shrubs and bushes, those are all going to be diploid organisms also. So like I said, it's a general rule. If it's big enough to see it, it's probably diploid. And if it's small, microscopic, it, it's, it's probably 